In this video, we're going to be putting the all-new ROG Xbox Ally X up against the ROG Ally X to see if it would be worth upgrading to the new model. We're going to run some synthetic benchmarks, some in-game benchmarks, and test battery life, but the first thing I wanted to talk about here was just ergonomics between these two. And I'll tell you, the ROG Xbox Ally X definitely takes the win. It's got these new handles, and it really does feel like you're just holding a controller. It's super comfortable, and I do think that ASUS did a great job with the ergonomics on the new Xbox Ally X. But to tell you the truth, I never complained about the original Ally X either. So this isn't as comfortable, but I never had a problem with it. I've been able to play on this thing for hours. My hands aren't cramping or anything like that. I can reach the buttons. It hasn't been a big deal for me. But after getting my hands on the Xbox Ally X, I can definitely say that the Xbox version is way more comfortable. But to tell you the truth, at least for me, if I found a brick that played games better than both of these devices put together, then I wouldn't mind holding on to a brick and playing games on it. It wouldn't bug me one bit. Now, there are a lot of differences between these two devices, mainly internally, but there's way more similarities. I mean, when you take a look at the two devices, you can see that we've basically got an ROG Ally X with those handles on it. But getting into the internals, this is where things get a bit different. With both of these devices, we have the same screen. It's a 7-inch, 120Hz VRR 1080p display. It's an IPS screen, and we've also got the same 80 watt hour battery. Obviously, the overall design is a bit different. Uh, the ROG Xbox Ally X is more comfortable, but when it comes down to the internal specs, over on the original X, we had the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. It's based on Zen 4, 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.3, boost up to 5.1. It's got that 12 compute unit RDNA 3i GPU, and this will clock up to 2900 megahertz. And with that one, we have 24 gigs of RAM running at 7500 mega transfers per second. On the new ROG Xbox Ally X, we've got the AMD Ryzen Z2 AI Extreme. It's based on Zen 5, and we've still got 8 cores and 16 threads, but it's set up a bit differently. 3 Zen 5 cores and 5 Zen 5C cores. Base clock on all 8 cores is 2 GHz, but we've got a bit of a different boost on the Zen 5 and the Zen 5C. So for that Zen 5, up to 5 GHz, and the Zen 5C only up to 3.3 basically matching the base clock of the Z1 Extreme. One of the biggest differences here is the iGPU. It's got a 16 compute unit RDNA 3.5 iGPU. It'll still clock up to 2900 megahertz. And we also have 24 gigs of RAM, just like the original X, but this is actually running at 8,000 mega transfers per second. Since we've got the Z2 AI, it also has an NPU. First thing I wanted to take a look at here was some CPU performance, and we're going with the performance mode at 17 watts and then turbo mode at 25 on both of these devices. Over on the left-hand side, we've got the Ally X with the Ryzen Z1 Extreme. This is Geekbench 6, and on the Z1 Extreme device at a 17 watt TDP, you can see that we came in with a single core of 1,795. Moving over to the Ryzen Z2 AI Extreme and the new ROG Xbox Ally X, we're up to 2,657 and 9,384 in multi. At the lower wattages, I do think that the Z2 AI Extreme really does shine, and taking it up to a 25 watt TDP, we're still coming ahead of the Z1 Extreme, but in multi-core, it's not by that much. Even single, you can see we're at 2,379 on the Z1 Extreme, and 2,784 on the Z2 AI Extreme. Either way you look at it, I mean, at 17 watts and 25, that Z2 is beating the Z1 out for sure. Next up, a little bit of an OpenCL GPU test with Geekbench 6, 25 watt TDP. On the Z1 Extreme, we've got that 12 compute unit RDNA 3i GPU, came in with a score of 27,807. And the Z2 Extreme has that 16 compute unit RDNA 3.5 based iGPU. That scored a 36,924. So we've got a significant jump here at a 25 watt TDP with that new RDNA 3.5 based iGPU. Checking out 3D Mark Steel Nomad at a 25 watt TDP on the Z1 Extreme, 485, and our FPS was 4.86. Over on the Z2 AI Extreme, 568, and we did gain a bit on that FPS, up to 5.69, but not by much. And I also wanted to test out 3D Mark Time Spy. 
This is actually pretty impressive for the Z2 AI Extreme. At a 17 watt TDP, over on the Z1 Extreme, we scored a 2539, and our graphics score was right there at 2292. Z2 AI Extreme came way ahead with a total score of 3298. And at a 25 watt TDP, the Z1 Extreme still couldn't beat out the Z1 AI Extreme at 17, so that was pretty impressive in my opinion. But our total score at 25 watts with the Z2 was 3,664. And we can actually take this up to a 35 watt TDP. I've been able to hit over 4,000 with this chip so far. Now it's time to move into some in game benchmarks. And I tested at a 25 watt TDP and a 17 watt TDP. What we're going to see on screen is the 25 watt run because it does look a little better. Over on the left hand side, we've got the ROG Ally X. Over on the right hand side, the ROG Xbox Ally X. Steam Deck preset 1080p. Both of these chips do handle this game quite well for what we have here. And when it comes to temps, it does look like the Z1 Extreme is getting a bit hotter with the uh, stock fan curve. So I'm using the turbo profile right now up to 25 watts. It's just going to do its own thing. Around 8 degrees difference between the two. At the end of the run here, 1080p, Steam Deck preset, 25 watt TDP, the Z1 Extreme managed 42.66 FPS, and the Z2 AI Extreme, 46.73. And to tell you the truth, while watching the benchmark runs, I figured the Z2 AI Extreme was going to be up in the 50s, just because it did feel and look a lot smoother. But either way, I mean, we still got a little bit of gain. It's not that much at a 25 watt TDP, basically 4 FPS. But taking it down to a 17 watt TDP, the Z1 Extreme is now getting 32 on average and the Z2 Extreme up to 39. So we've got a 6 FPS difference here. And this has kind of been the case across the board at those lower wattages with the Z2 Extreme. Next up, we've got the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're at 1080 low settings with this game, no scaling. This is the 25 watt run. And again, I did run at a 17 watt. But at 25 watts on the Z1 Extreme, we managed 59 FPS. Over on the Z2 AI Extreme, only up to 62. Now we did break that 60 mark with the game. And I'll tell you, I mean, it is playable on both of these handhelds. But let's take a look at how it did at a 17 watt TDP. Z1 Extreme, 44 FPS. And the Z2 Extreme, up to 57 FPS. I mean, that's a pretty big jump at the same TDP for an iGPU. And I say the Z2 Extreme does like these low wattages for sure. Next one I wanted to test here was Forza Horizon 5, my favorite arcade racer. 1080 medium, no scaling. That's how I like to run it on these handhelds. And at the end of the run, that Z1 Extreme got an average of 76. The Z2 Extreme up to 84 FPS. And at a 17 watt TDP, the Z1 Extreme is at 62. And the Z2 Extreme is at 78. Here's the built-in benchmark for Black Myth Wukong, 1080, 60% resolution scale using FSR, and we're not using any kind of frame gen. On the ROG Ally X with the Z1 Extreme, at a 25 watt TDP, we managed 44 FPS. On the Z2 Extreme and the ROG Xbox Ally X, up to 53. And at a 17 watt TDP, the Z1 Extreme is now doing 33 FPS on average and the Z2 Extreme up to 42. And the final game I tested was Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. This one just puts a hurting on any iGPU. We're at a 25 watt TDP and that's the only way I ran this. You can see that both of these aren't performing very well. Low settings, 1080, FSR set to balance, 25 watts, 30 FPS on the Z1 Extreme and 31 FPS on the Z2 Extreme. So yeah, I just don't see this being playable at 1080 on these iGPUs yet. Now I want to check out battery life on both of these devices, and we're going to start here with an easier to run game. We're in quiet mode, and on the original ROG Ally X, total battery draw here is around 6.3 watts. That's everything going on with the system, RGB is off. Now moving over to the ROG Xbox Ally X, same game, same exact settings. This thing's pulling around 6 watts or 6.1 watts. So a little less draw there. 
And of course, we're not just going to be running indie games on this. Uh, they state that we can run AAA games on these machines. So I went through and I tested at a 17 watt TDP and a 25 watt TDP with both of these devices. We've got an 80 watt hour battery. Screen brightness was set to 50%. RGB was off. 60 hertz mode. 8 watt 2D gaming on both of these devices. I mean, you're going to get around 10 hours. When it comes to AAA gaming at 17 watts, around 26 watts total draw, around three hours. And with AAA gaming at a 25 watt TDP, we're looking at about 32 watts in total draw. So around two hours and 30 minutes. So they're looking around the same kind of battery life, but here's the deal. In my testing, for the most part, running the Z2 Extreme AI at a 15 watt TDP is gonna net you the same performance that the Z1 Extreme is gonna put out at a 17 watt TDP. So in all actuality, you can get better battery life out of the ROG Xbox Ally X if you're trying to match the performance of the Z1 Extreme. So when it comes down to it for gaming performance, I've been doing a lot of testing between these two chips, and it looks like at a 25 watt TDP, that Z2 Extreme AI at the time of making this is giving us a boost of around 10 to 20% in gaming performance. At a 17 watt TDP, that jumps from a 19 to a 30% boost in gaming performance. And for a lot of people out there, battery life is gonna be a big deal. So running at those lower TDPs, getting a boost like that is pretty decent. But in my opinion, I mean, going from that Z1 extreme to the Z2 extreme, it's not a dramatic generational jump like a lot of us were really hoping for. In my opinion, if you've already got the ROG Ally X and you want to get something with better performance, I don't think that this is the one to get right now. Maybe in the future, because as we know, I mean, with the original Ally and the Ally X with the Z1 Extreme, we saw a huge jump in performance from launch day until now with driver optimizations. But right now, just strictly talking about performance gains, I don't see a huge reason to upgrade. Now, if you're looking for something more comfortable, yeah, then definitely go for something like this. If you're looking to get 20 to 30 more frames on your favorite game, the Z2 Extreme just isn't going to do it right now at those same TDPs. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'll be keeping an eye on driver updates for the Z2 Extreme, and I will have another video. So if you're interested in seeing something like that, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. Like always, thanks for watching.